I'm gonna miss this man. Oh yeah. So we're gonna be rolling in a new intro in a few days. I gotta tell you, I'm gonna miss that song a little bit. Don't worry, we have more music coming because you know we gotta spice it up. Sorry for the late start. None of my pens were working. Clearly, the Matrix is after me. Delhi was acting up. All sorts of crazy was happening here. Is all I'm gonna say. It was a party on the scene that we had to tend to. Disco ball and all. Anyway, welcome everyone. I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna talk about today. A little surprise today. I am manning the chat, which means that really good things could happen, really bad things could happen. I am not terribly tech savvy. Let me just say that right now. So if anything goes wrong, it's my fault. Delhi is here on site to just, you know, catch us all if we shall fall as a result of my God knows what. All right, so pray for us all. Jesus, take the wheel. That's how I say it. Okay, so first, I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about today. I have some great stuff. This is a good show. It's a hot show. It's a spicy show. First, I'm going to be reacting to a panel of modern women. You know our friends at the Whatever Podcast. I love it. This was a good one. Whoo, some golden nuggets. Different topics than you're used to seeing. I'm going to talk about friends with benefits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to talk about long-distance relationships, which came up, and evolutionary urges. Huh. Lots to say there. Then I'm going to get into, I know you've seen this story of the simp husband. Have you seen this story? Simp husband standing by his cheating wife. She cheated with six, six co-workers. He's sticking around. We're going to have to talk about that. We're going to dig into a feminist dating profile. Oh, I have it here. She's got the purple hair, y'all. You know she's got the purple hair. Here we go. We're going to dig in. These are the dating profiles. By the way, guys, if you see them, run. Run as fast as you can. Then we're going to talk about a woman who used men for free dinner so she didn't have to pay for groceries. Mm -hmm. And we're going to close with some matrix topics. We have to expose a UN regulator who was threatened by free speech and says she wants to impose sanctions, by the way, on Twitter if Elon Musk doesn't behave. And we're going to talk about a matrix program broadcaster. Andrew Tate linked to this uh, broadcaster. And you got to see her reaction to a guy who's following Tate, you, you just got to, I'm going to save it. I'm not even going to tease it. It's unbelievable what these people get away with. All right, so welcome, everyone. Before we start, I have to tell you who our partner is for today. So you know how you have all those passwords out there? You just, you, you go to different websites. I have like a million passwords. I plug them in. You feel like there's some sort of safety, some sort of security there because you've put in a password. Well, as it turns out, I partnered with this company, Aura. They just renewed with us. I love them. Everyone I've recommended them to has felt infinitely safer and more secure on the web because it, as you may know, what happens is you think you've got all these passwords that keep you safe and then you find out that 30, 40, 50, one friend, 80, 80, 80 passwords out. I'm like, why do you have 80 passwords? You never know. All of them in the book, all on the dark web, all just ready to wreck her life. Now, I didn't know that identity theft was happening every 14 seconds in America. That's insane. What I can tell you is that I know people who have been the victim of identity theft. It wrecks your life. It takes years to get your life back. We don't want that. I don't want the sites you go to for financial security. I don't want your banks. I don't want any of your information compromised. What I love about Aura is that it's identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all in one. I'm not tech savvy, as I said. I have no problem navigating it. I love it. If there's an expenditure that happens that's above a limit I've set, I get a notification right to my phone just letting me know something's going on. Is this you? Yes, it's you. Cool. If it's not me, isn't it great that I know now so that I can avoid what's to come? I've had my credit card stolen. It's not fun. You all know this stuff. So it's super friendly, user friendly. It's super easy to use. The VPN lets you stay anonymous online, which is key. We all know that the Matrix is trying to take everybody's privacy. So this helps you to stay anonymous by keeping your browsing history and your personal info safe and encrypted, which is very important. So check this out. If you're curious how many times your passwords appear on the dark web, and I know you are, I have a special offer for you today, and it's in the description. You can go down and hit on the link. You go to aura.com backslash shed a die, or just go into our description, click on that link. And if you sign up right now, you'll get two weeks free, a two-week free trial to see how many times your passwords show up on the dark web. And then you can decide, do you want to partner with them? Do you want to do something? I, I say, listen, privacy is on its way out. People are worried about their financial security in these times. This was a no-brainer for me. I partnered with them. I feel more safe. I feel more, more secure. I trust in them implicitly, which is why I share them with you. By the way, if you sign up, 
in the comments to the show, please let me know how many times your password showed up. I'm curious. I hear people saying 20, 15. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. And think about, sometimes people use the same password over and over again. Say you've got like three passwords and they're all compromised. Don't you want to know that? Okay, so go into the description. Get feisty. Aura. It's good stuff. All right, let's begin. Let me take a deep breath before I deal with these modern women. You know they're going to make me nuts. All right, let's start whatever podcast, our friends, 1354 Delhi. Let's pull that up. I've never had a boyfriend before. I just kind of like talk around and that's kind of about it. <laughs> <laughs> Open to dating, though. <laughs> well, can you articulate a little better what talking around is? Like, like you kind of just hook up with people and then you talk to them for like a week or two and then... And then what happens? History. Well, they're normally like friends, though. So like you see them, you know, like getting with like your guy friends. And then you talk for a little bit, like intimately, and then your friends again. So it's like, like it never happened. <laughs> oh, you know? situationship type vibe? No, not, I wouldn't even call it situationship type. It's like not even like there the step yet. before that. Like a little bit below. Yeah. It's like friends with benefits. I see. Kind of. Are you two sophomores or freshmen? We're freshmen. freshmen. Oh, okay, okay, let's pause yeah. it there. Okay. So what, what is this girl talking about? Is this the norm now, chat? You know, your super chats will be read, by the way, and they're going to be read by me. They're going to be read by me if all goes well. Mm -hmm. So let me know. Is this the new normal? This girl is Do you hear what she's saying? She's saying, oh, well, I have these guy friends, and we just kind of like dip in and out of friendship, and then we hook up, and then we go back to friendship, and then we go back to hooking up. That's a nasty. Number two, I can't imagine why you don't have a boyfriend, honey. I can't imagine why some guy wouldn't want to date you if they know that you've got this whole pool, this rotation of bodies that are friends, friends with benefits, then friends, then friends with benefits. I can't imagine why you're not more appealing to the male population. I mean, what the heck is even going on? Why not just date who you want? I mean, also, let's think about this. She's got all these guy friends. Well, I say she's got, you know, 15 guy friends. I don't know. And she, they're on rotation, in and out. She's not physical with them. Then she is. Then she's not. When she actually does meet a guy, that guy's going to say to her, you got to get rid of all these guys. You just lost all your friends, doll. Because no guy is going to want you talking to a guy that you've hooked up with in the past, even if it wasn't love, even if it wasn't anything special, even if it was just whatever. They're going to be like, that guy's seen you naked. Bye. Mm -mm, he's got to go or I go. So what are you even doing? What is this, just like a pool of backups that you've got there? So you've got like a guy that you really want, but then you've got a whole pool full of backups that are friends and then friends with benefits. This is disgusting, man. Not to mention the ease with which these modern women go in and out of this stuff. Like somebody's seen you naked, that doesn't change something for you. What is broken inside of you as a female? That some guy sees you naked, you're intimate with them, your bodies are pressed together, all that stuff. All that happens, and then you're cool to just go back to, like, your friends. Oh, yeah, let's go just, I don't know, let's chill. What is broken in a woman that that can happen? There should be something that happens inside of a woman's mind, heart, soul, when she is intimate with another man, that there is no going back to the friend zone. So she doesn't really like any of these guys. We know that. In which case, why are you sleeping with them at all? Why are you sleeping with them at all? If, you, if you're able to pull them in and out of a friend zone, you don't like them. You're not that into them. So why are you sleeping with them? There is so much broken with these young women. I cannot believe And the ease with which she talks about it. Like, oh, yeah, you know, as if this is what's happening. So tell me, chat. I want to know. Is this what's happening? I mean, this girl's 18 years old. 18 years old. And she's, oh, yeah, I got a rotation. I, can't, I don't have a boyfriend, but I have nasty. And you know what? They go on these shows. I also think about this all the time. They go on these shows, and then, like, you think guys are going to see this and be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> sign me up. No, honey. No. They're going to be like, mm, next. Maybe they'll take a look at some of those in the bunny costume because they're not going to want to deal with you. All right, let's go to 4329. We got bunnies today. Yay. Say she was hooking up with somebody before going on a date with you. Not, I'm not the same day, just in general. And then you guys go on a date. She realizes, oh my gosh, Brian is the love of my life. Goodbye to my roster. But then you find out she had a roster prior to you. Are you still going to be done? Oof. How big if, is the roster? Wait. <laughs> it's subjective. It's a what? I, I said the, the roster. He said how many people on the roster. Yeah. I said it's subjective. I said the idea of 
you finding out after she drops her roster after you guys' first date and decides, you know what, I'm going to stick to just Brian and Brian only. But I had people that I was, were, was seeing and hooking up with and going on dates with prior to Brian. Would you still be uninterested after finding out there were people prior to your first date? If Okay, so if she drops them, if we, had, if we slept together and I fi- find out that she had slept with someone close to when we had slept together or after we had slept together. I'm only talking about beforehand. How soon is too soon? For what? So you say some, you slept with her. Minimum a fortnight, but even then, like, <laughs> I want to say, I want to say it would be nice if it was a couple months since the last time you had sex, which is asking a lot. Okay. Why is it, Brian? Fucking, so, yeah. This is where we're at. I love this guy. He's funny. But like, and he's right. He's like, he's asking a lot. Why? Because everybody is getting slutty. So now it's a lot. How sad. It's a lot for a guy to say, well, at least, you know, maybe two months before we hook up that maybe you hadn't hooked up with somebody else. Now that sounds extreme. What a mess. She says, oh, the roster. This is my favorite. The roster is subjective. Is it? Is it, honey? The roster is, is sub- what does that mean, the roster? He asked you a question about how many bodies you're talking about. How many guys beforehand? Oh, it's subjective. What does that even mean? What, what, what a ridiculous thing to say. I was stuck on that before I could even get to the rest. All right, so here's the problem. If you have a pattern of sleeping with guys and not caring and that's your pattern, that's why it's an issue because the guy's going to see that And if he knows that you have a pattern of hooking up and this, that, he's already defined you as the type of woman that that separates sex from emotion. That comes with a whole bunch of baggage, right? You got the high body count. You know, you you don't value your own body. There's a whole bunch of stuff that comes in with that. But here's the thing also. He says a fortnight, that's two weeks, okay? (laughs) Two weeks is nothing. Think about this. If she's, if you're a guy and you're hooking up with a girl, you, you sleep together for the first time and you find out that she slept with somebody two weeks ago, all you're going to be thinking about is, wait a minute, I was already talking to her. I was, we already went for that walk. We already went, went on that, wasn't quite a date, but we were hanging. So let me tell you something straight, man. I'll be straight with you. If she hooked up with somebody after she started talking to you and flirting with you, You start flirting with her. Everything's going great. You maybe even spend time together. You don't sleep together, but she's hooking up with other guys. She don't like you that much. She does not like you. Look, my pen reacted because it was that bold. She does not like you that much if that's happening. She doesn't. Because when a woman really likes you, it's tunnel vision. I say this all the time. So if she's talking to you, she's talking to you. She likes you. Everything's going great. She's going to stick with you. She's going to be like this right? She really likes, she doesn't like you. She's going to be looking for, oh, one foot out the door. Oh, this guy wants to hook up. Oh, that guy. She's going to keep talking to you. That means you're okay. You're all right. You're like the B team. Okay. I don't know how to tell guys that when women really like you, they stop everything else with other guys like that. You don't have to tell them to do it. You don't have to ask them to do it. You don't have to beg them to do it. You don't have to invite them to do it. They do it. They do it. We do it naturally. If we really like a guy, the the fastest way to know we don't like a guy is to find out that we either tell you, oh, I'm not ready to settle down or I don't want to be exclusive. That's one. We talked about that. Or you find out that she's dipping her toe into the pool over here and over here and by pool, I mean other men while she's hanging out with you. Mm -mm, Not that into you. Nope, nope, nope. I honestly, if I were him, if I were a dude, I would want my the girl that I'm interested in, the girl that I'm hanging out with, I would say a minimum of a month because you, you should be talking to her for a little bit, right? You're talking to her, you're messing around. Maybe you're not sleeping together, but you're doing stuff, right? You're doing stuff that went beyond friendship. So now you got to know that while you were doing stuff that went beyond friendship, she was doing stuff that went beyond friendship with some other dude. That means you're not that important. That means she's fickle about that stuff. Bye. See you later, alligator. I know I'm harsh, but you somebody's got to be. Y'all being too soft. Okay. Let's go to 249.34. This is about women. Oh, here we go with this one. Is this the bunny? 
might be the bunny talking about the patriarchy, this, that, the other thing, but it's good. Let's listen. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Why is it that women are attracted to tall, muscular men? Some women, not me. Like, uh, it's just okay. like, <laughs> why? If you, if, you, make hold on. Rule, if you line up a hundred... Right, the exception doesn't make a rule, but that doesn't make a rule either. If you line up a hundred women, how many of them are going to prefer a guy who's tall and physically strong? How many men are going to pre prefer a girl that's fit and has tits and ass? It's the same fucking thing. Women who have big <laughs> You're birthing my point. hips and nice tits for their children evolutionarily are hotter to men. Men you're, who are you're proving my broad point. shoulders. You're boobs. proving my no, point. No, I'm not. That's literally He's the right. point. You're but we've developed past that. We but are now. We still. So, but you just said that men are attracted to women with big tits and wide hips. Right. And women are attracted to men who are taller. For evolutionary so reasons. Evolution. We're going after evolutionary mother inst instincts. Right. And so you're the same point. Me. I'm right. making the same point. I'm just saying but we have developed past that now as a society. We have made we have okay. decided that we are on the same mental level so we can now choose women can now choose their partners just as men can choose their partners where before that was not possible women did not have the capability to ha have their own finances to take care of themselves they needed a man you to gotta provide. speak into my they phone. needed a man to provide in order to survive back in the 50s and 60s you would be homeless you would be destitute or sent to a sanitarium if you didn't have a husband if you didn't succeed in birthing and stuff back then now it is different we have jobs we succeed in careers we are able to vote i know the chat hates when i bring that up but it's it's real we have developed the chat the chat doesn't i read i read a comment but it's real we've developed past that point of like being in that evolutionarily driven stage and as society develops we get further and further away no. from it okay and the bunny is wrong the bunny is wrong I don't know. What sound do bunnies make? Is it like a little tweet, tweet? I don't know. Whatever. Maybe she should do that instead of yapping. But she talks about, the, my favorite is the sanitarium line. Did you all hear that? About the sanitarium? That women were sent to the sanitarium if they didn't get married or have children. What, what history books, again, do they have? So all women who didn't choose that life went to the sanitarium. Okay. Maybe some feminist teacher told her that. I mean, you have to laugh sometimes. You just have to, you really just have to laugh. So what's interesting is she's trying to make the argument that because women have choice now and because women have, have some sort of um, ownership of their decisions more so than they used to, this is her point, not mine, that evolutionary triggers, biology, all of that stuff isn't playing as big of a role. So I would ask her, okay, you're right, women are more financially stable, Women have, you know, jobs. Women aren't dependent on men financially in the same way in many respects as they used to be. And yet, they make the same decisions. They still want a financially stable man. They still want a big, strong man who's going to be a protector. They still want, you know, oh, I want a guy to be tall. I want a guy to be fit. They're still looking for the same things. Even though they can work, they want a situation where they don't have to work in many respects. Even though they can take a self-defense class, they can, you know, file and register and get a gun, they still want that guy who, if they're walking down the street down a dark alley, alley is going to be able to jump in and protect them. They still say, we want a guy who makes six figures and up. If you're so interested in financial independence, why do you want that? Well, because your biology is still talking. This evolutionary stuff that everyone in the modern world wants to dismiss is still talking. And a woman is sitting there and her hormones and her biology are talking to her every single day. And what they're saying is, maybe they're saying you want to have a baby. And if you want to have a baby, you want to stay home with your kids a little bit. So there's going to be a period where you're not going to work and that guy next to you is going to need to work steadily and consistently. Maybe the hormones are saying when you work that hard, you don't feel good. You need some downtime. You need some work-life balance, whatever it may be. He doesn't need that. Latch on to him. That's biology talking. It's okay. It's okay. Men and women are different. It's okay to be different. What it's not okay to do is pretend that because now we live in a world where women can have their own financial success and women can have their own stability, that they're not still guided by their biology when they make these decisions because they are. They are guided by their biology and their hormones and their evolutionary, whatever she calls it, throughout. So this is warped odd, weird female hysteria that you're seeing. Okay. 
Let's go to 32612. This is an interesting justification. I think this is the rabbit as well. Bunny, whatever you want to call her. Looks like a Halloween costume. This, these only fan girls. Why are they? Co- Sometimes they're cats. Sometimes they're bunnies. I, do they go on OnlyFans in the costume? Is that the shtick? Save your money, man. Don't waste your money on that. Okay. 32612. This is a justification for high body count that I've not heard. Let's listen. A good friend. Not this one. A different one. Who was trying to find, like, a serious relationship. But you know what? She was sleeping with other people because she wanted to see how the sex was before continuing on down the line of a serious relationship. And I think that's what a lot of women with a slightly higher body count have right now is that they're meeting a lot of men who they're sleeping with and then the men ghost them or whatever and they have no choice but to then have that body count. Maybe they thought it was going to be a relationship. Maybe they thought it was going to be great. But they get ghosted. Guy moves on to the next girl and they have to move on. In order to find that end partner who's gonna click with you on all aspects, sexuality, intimacy, intelligence, you have to try. I was just lucky that, you know, or maybe unlucky, that I have. I find it really hard to get intimate with people who I'm not close with. Okay, so but what like, are you talking about then? Don't, so why should- what is the bunny talking about then? What is going on here? So why, okay, fine. You have to feel guys out. She's saying that the body count's got to be high because you got to test the waters. You're trying to find your partner. So you got to sleep with everybody? Whatever happened to you go out on a date with somebody and you test the waters without sleeping with them? You can't get a judge of your physical attraction to somebody, of your emotional attraction to somebody, of your values, of whether or not you guys want the same things. You can't get any of that without getting into the bedroom. Are you brain dead? What is going on that you can't do that? I mean, people used to go on dates all the time. I went on dates and I would go and sit and maybe have a dinner or maybe have a coffee or maybe go for a walk and be like, "Mm -mm, this one's not it. You can sense physical attraction sometimes from across a room or through a simple conversation. You do not need to sleep with guy after guy after guy after guy as some sort of absurd justification for testing the waters and trying to find your special person and all that. Now, I'm not saying that if you get to know somebody, you're feeling them, they're feeling you, you go out on a few dates, it escalates, you know, and then it comes time to see, well, would we be, you know, fully sexually compatible? But you already know that. I'm telling you, as a female, you already know it's not about the guy's skill in the bedroom. It's not about some tricks he's doing or some weird stuff or, oh, I feel, oh, wow, I didn't know that position existed. It's not. It's about whether you're attracted to him and whether you like his energy. And if you're attracted to him and you like his energy, it's going to be a good experience in the bedroom. If you're into him, it's going to be a good experience, right? By and large. So you can't test that out without sleeping. What a sick justification for loose behavior. You know what I mean when I'm saying loose. What a ridiculous, you've got to sleep with everybody now, they're telling you. Women got to sleep with everybody now to figure out if they like someone. That's nasty. And then when guys say, oh, mm-mm, that's not going to work for me, and you're sitting alone, crying, weeping on a Saturday night with a big old tub of Ben and Jerry's, you want to know why. It's because you've been sleeping with everybody, and he got wind of it. Maybe if you had just gone on dates and been that girl, by the way, who doesn't sleep with everybody and only sleep with, sleeps with somebody when they're really into them, you'd have that reputation instead of the reputation of somebody who's racking up body counts just because I need to feel my way around and see what I like. That's brain dead. Can't have brain dead. We can't allow for it on this show. All right. I see some chats building up. Don't you worry. I'm going to get there after the whatever podcast. So get on in there. Super chats. I know you have questions. I'm coming for you. All right, let's go to 333.18. This girl is appalled. We bring the girl back in with the the Friends of Benefits rotation. Nasty. We bring her back in. Nasty. And she's talking now about, she's horrified that if she listens to Brian's advice, she may not be able to have sex for a whole year. Let's go. The time. I don't think you should be dating and hooking up with an- another guy at the same time. Okay. If, if you're dating, be properly single. Be that, that's what I would like to see. But be what if you don't find a guy single. for like a year? And what then you you're just not having sex for a whole year. Wait, what? Like it's say like if you like can't properly find a guy that you want to date and have sex with 
for like a year, that means you're saying that the girl should be celibate for a whole year, basically. Sure. So, okay. Sure. Really? Okay. I'll actually allow. Oh my gosh. I'll you. Go ahead. Call the authorities, <laughs> Deli. Call the authorities. This woman would have to somehow survive without sex for a year. She acts like you're talking like you're going to take away bread and water. She's going to have to starve to death a year. You can't, you can't figure out how to not have sex for you. Well, let me tell you, honey, there are guys that don't have sex for years at a time. There is a whole generation of men that are not having sex. It's not because they don't want to have sex. It's because they're not able to make it happen because of the dynamics that are happening in society right now because of technology and social media and a whole bunch of factors and the fact that women are getting pickier and pickier and pickier because they got a ton of attention coming their way. And you've got, you know, almost a third of men under the age of 30 are virgins now, not by choice. And she's talking about how it would be too hard for her to not have sex for a year if she were to put in place a strategy of only sleeping with people that mattered and of not double dipping. And going back and forth and dating one person and still sleeping with this one. Can you imagine? I look back at my life. I mean, I had one long distance relationship. One. We'll talk about that. We're going to get to the long distance relationships. Because that's a whole other thing. I had one. And I can remember long periods of time where I didn't see him. I wasn't like, oh my God, how am I going to not have sex for six months? I mean, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. If that's how women are thinking now, I'm telling you, the more I cover this content, the more I realize that women are broken. They have completely lost any sense of self-respect. They are broken inside. They're talking about, what would I do if I didn't have sex for a year? They're talking about a rotation of guys that they have at their beck and call. Friends, friends with benefits. Today he's a friend. Tomorrow I'm sleeping with him. This stuff is disgusting. It's disgusting. Really, I mean, okay, we have one more clip. Long distance relationships? I can't. This might be the bunny again, I'm not sure. And then I'm going to get to your chats. I see a few here. So get on in there now if you want me to get to it before we go to the simp husband who took his wife back after she slept with six coworkers. I mean, you can't write these things. All right, let's go to 359.28. See, this is beneficial because, you know, when you're in that, like, honeymoon bubble like stage with someone it's really easy to be infatuated with their looks and Mm. you know their the physical aspect of it I just have to rely on his personality you know he calls me every day he's hypes me up he still gives me attention he's around for the right reasons you know but when you saw him you did not walk up to him and introduce yourself and beeline for him because of his personality I didn't know him yet Right, so... but Physical you, attraction is important. Okay, but that was the basis for... You walked up to him because I am assuming you being so overt like that, you found him to be exceptionally attractive. Absolutely. Okay. Well, so the physical attraction is it's, already established. Yeah, but you wouldn't say that, like, when you're in the honeymoon stage with the girl, like... You don't get carried away with like, I don't know, you like them so much because okay. they're right she's there. She's talking like, in and out. She don't know what cuddle. she's talking about. These young girls so lost. It's crazy. God, I hope I never sounded like that. Mom, did I? Ooh, hope you helped. Okay, so bottom line is, let's be, let's be straight on long distance relationships. It's going to drive some people crazy who are in them and don't like what I have to say. But here's the truth. Women don't like long distance relationships when we're into a guy. We hate it. We don't like it at all. This, this girl here talking about how she likes the long-distance relationship, she's not into that guy. She's not into that guy. That guy, hey, guy, if you're listening, she's not into you, okay? Women like you close. Women like to feel your touch. When we're really into a guy, we want him close. We want him to hold us. We can't wait to see him next. We don't like this distance. It makes us uncomfortable. It makes us feel odd. We're always wanting to like talk to you and have an exchange with you. So if we like, if we're saying, yeah, this long distance relationship is great. Yeah, it's because we don't like you that much. And I would guarantee you that she's got one eye always on the scene. Is there a guy she'll like more? She likes having that flexibility. She likes being able to go to the club. He doesn't know what she's doing there. He's not there. And then she gets the attention from him when she wants it. That's her security blanket. That long distance guy is her security blanket. She's got her security blanket, but she goes out to the club and maybe she'll meet somebody she really likes. 
and she'll flirt a little bit and she can get away with a lot of stuff going on because you're not there. Now, granted, that guy also can. That's a reality of long distance relations. But I can tell you women who embrace this and pretend, oh, yeah, it's the best thing ever. Mm -mm, Not that into the guy. It's a red flag. Um, Also, when you have a long distance relationship, you, you really can't get to know somebody because life is messy. Life is sticky and it's messy. And the only way you see that messiness is when you see people in their day-to-day life. When you have this long-distance relationship where somebody swoops in for five or six days, you can make those five or six days perfect. You can make her really pleasant and he's great and everything. It seems like a little mini like vacation all the time. Like, oh, here's a little mini vacation. And then you each go back to your regular, bumpy, sticky, messy lives. But you're not doing that together. And then you come back for a little getaway and a little vacation. It's a highly idealized relationship. It's not real. You need to see her every day. You need to see, not every day, but you need to see her daily life. You need to see when she's in a bad mood. What does that look like? You need to see, you know, when she's having a day where she's having, you know, the PMS or whatever it may be. I don't know what it is. But you need to see that stuff. You, you, when you have these long distance relationships, oftentimes you see people on their best behavior. It's like, oh, my girlfriend's coming into town for a week. Everything's perfect. Then she leaves. The house is trashed. You know, you're, you drink too much one night. Your friend who's a bad influence comes. She needs to see your life. You need to see her life. So if you're going to plan life with somebody, you can't do long distance and then think you're getting some idea of what they're really like. It's, it's a broken system. It's a broken system. But I promise you, I promise you that a woman who embraces long distance relationships has one foot out the door looking around to see what else is out there, doesn't like you that much. And also a guy who's pro long distance relationship. I'm not talking about a guy who gets some sort of gets in some predicament with work and, you know, they're forced into this situation and neither of them want it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about two parties that are like, yeah, long distance. Mm-hmm, I would love to see what he's doing on the side too. Because he's not yearning to be with her every day. Mm-mm. Nope, doesn't work like that. And also, I'll tell you this, guys, and you know this, when you're really into a girl, you want to, like, claim that girl. This is my girl. Mine. Stay away from her. You have that possessive stuff that comes out as a man because you don't want other guys messing with your girl if you're really into her. If you don't really like a girl, then you're not so worried if she's going out and flirting with somebody because you're going out and flirting with somebody. You know how it works. So let's be real. They give you a line about long-distance relationships. Run. Oh, yeah, I want a long-distance relationship. Oh, do you, honey? What do you want to do? Why do you want that long distance relationship? Okay, let's see. We got some chats here. I'm going to read. Here I go. Jelly's like, somebody pray for us. Slice of pie is here. Hi, Jed. Do you have an email I can send to? I have a true story of how you can help, how you help find my wife. Okay, so I can't give my email. (laughs) on the show can you imagine if I was like oh yes this is my email do would y'all like my phone number too maybe you can text me during the show you know you would I can't but you can send me a message you go on Instagram you can send me a message remember also let me take this opportunity there's two things that two spaces that I have bila.locals.com is a space where you can support me you don't have to spend any money you can spend money if you want it's as little as five dollars a month to support me it's an interactive page I post content there you don't see anywhere else and it's kind of an exclusive club for like the Bila it's like the Bila group, you know? It's the coolest people on the internet. You got to know that. And then also, Manect, you want to book a one-on-one with me, a FaceTime, and you want to talk about something personal, you don't want to write in the chat or whatever, go on to Manect.com. We can do that. I love that you asked for my email, though. Brandon M., newest whatever, has a rotund chick in her early 20s with an almost 300 body count. Wrap your head around that one. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. Pearl, just Pearly calls them the whales. I wasn't going to say it, but let me tell you. 300 body count, man. Rotund. I got to see if she's rotund. What's your definition of rotund versus mine? That could be subjective. This pen they gave me, by the way, was from The Matrix. I'm going to have to yell at Andres. Gives me this pen and the cap keeps falling off. There you go. The Matrix is everywhere today. At least it wasn't Deli. Deli trying to compromise my ability in the chat. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, by the way. Okay, then we've got Omega Resetsu. Probably said that wrong. Bring back the sanitarium for these modern times. He wants the sanitarium that that bunny was talking about to come back. Maybe some women need the sanitarium. Who knows? Some people have lost their minds. Here's what I'll say to you, too. I wrote this tweet the other day that was controversial about depression and stuff. I said, if you're depressed or anxious and you go to your doctor and they go to give you a pharma drug without asking about your diet, your exercise, your sleep, how much sunshine you get, all those things, you have a drug dealer. You don't have a doctor. Get a new doctor. Seriously. So keep that in mind. All right. Not so bad. Me in the chat getting feisty. I, I come on, man. You got to load them up. You got to put me to the test. All right, let's see. 
Let's go to number two. Here we have, okay, this is not a video. Y'all hear this story about a simp husband who stood by his wife? Now, you got to listen. I have two articles here from the New York Post. <laughs> I can't. Let me get it. This is the other article. There's another crazy one coming your way. Tennessee cops. You've seen this? Tennessee cops, including married female officer, fired after repeated wild sex romps. I really like the title here. I think it does it justice. We're going to read some of this. A small Tennessee police station has been rocked by allegations of wild sexual misconduct after a married female officer allegedly had steamy romps with six, six male officers, including illicit on-duty liaisons. Oh, she was doing it while she was on duty. Nasty. Officer Megan Hall and her fellow law officers allegedly engaged in wild sex sexcapades that included sending dirty pics, taking her top off at a Girls Gone Wild hot tub party, and even having oral sex with two officers at this police station. The extracurricular tryst took place at hotels and parties at other officers' houses and on a boat, while Hall was also accused of performing oral sex on Powell and Shields, these are two other officers, while on duty at the police station and the police gym. She's doing the nasty at the station, she's doing the nasty at the gym, and she's married. When asked about the tip, this other officer admitted to having sex with her on numerous occasions. Okay, so I read this. That's the original article. That's her. Mm-hmm. Judge away. Then we go to the next article that I see, the update. And this, will, this is from last week, but I didn't have a chance to cover it. We had guests. I have to comment. Then I see a headline that says, the husband is sticking by his wife. I nearly spit all of my food onto the floor in disgust. What do you mean, I said to myself, can't be. But no, read. The husband of the Tennessee officer, fired for having sex with six of her coworkers, she was fired at least, is standing by his wife. I don't know how he's doing it. He's more of a man than I am, this other person says, but he's trying to salvage his marriage. First of all, no, he's not. This is not manly behavior. Your wife goes to work, disrespects you by sleeping with six coworkers, making out men, women, everything. It is not manly to stand by your wife. Something is going on that's deeply broken there. You need to stand your ground. This is a pattern of behavior that needs to stop. By the way, there's also references in the article that... Apparently, the husband knew that something was a foul. She apparently had a heavy drinking problem. Okay, that needs to be addressed. That's an issue separately. But also, there had been a time when they were all out, and she started like making out with some girl, and he didn't feel comfortable with it. He had not signed up for a threesome, and he objected. So you, you already had an incident where you objected, and she went and defied what you said and went and slept with a bunch of people anyway. And now you're like, well, I'm just going to stand by my wife. No, you need to do something. What are you doing staying in this situation? What are you doing? Look, you look happy, smiling. You thought everything was cool and she was doing all these sex romps with other guys. Have you no dignity left as a man? Have you no dignity? Listen, and I don't support, I'm not somebody who takes marital vows lightly. But come on now. She, you think she's into you? She's doing this at work? Okay. By the way, Oh, here we go. Megan Hall is the woman, I'm going to go back, told her co-worker she was in an open marriage. So she lied to the co-workers about it. She said she was in an open marriage. And one of her co-workers said, oh, this is the coup de gras, by the way. I share a name with this simp guy. The simp's name is Jedediah. That's his name. It's spelled differently, granted. But I have to share a name with this guy. Deli's losing his mind. This guy I have to share a name with. Who's like, oh, oh, you slept with six people at work? Oh, all right. Don't, you're not going to do it again, right? This is a situation that I cannot stomach. Now, and I said, uh, here's this, oh, here it is. Look, according to an internal investigative report, they said that the guy, the husband, had become upset at a party when she had been begun kissing a, another woman. So there was, there was behaviors here. So this is what I have to say, two things. Number one. Guys, when you meet a woman and you like her, don't put blinders on and don't pretend that you don't see what you see. So if she's doing stuff like this, if she's, you know, out at the club and she's hanging all over, drunk, sloppy, hanging all over other girls, trying to make out with other girls, they do that, trying to make out, oh, trying to get other guys' attention on the dance floor, rubbing up against somebody inappropriately that's not you, don't just be like, well, she had too much to drink. No, no. No excuses. Before you get married to somebody, figure out who you're going to marry. Don't put a ring on something that's doing that. No. So you have to stop making excuses. And I know sometimes guys, they, they're so desperate, you know, they're like want to hold on to a woman. 
you know, you got the starry eyes, maybe she's really good looking, whatever it may be, and you let stuff go. Guess what happens? You let stuff go, and then you find yourself in a situation a few years later, later where you're married to some woman, and she's sleeping with six coworkers. This guy has been walked all over in this story. Don't allow yourself to be a doormat. People say, well, Jed, should he leave? Yes. Yes, this is insane behavior. Now, if she has something wrong, some type of drinking issue or whatever. I saw another reference that she had a weird relationship with a gun that wasn't loaded that she would click by her head or some weird. There sounds like there's some mental stuff going on. Now, if you want to go to some counseling or you want to do something to help her, fine. I'm not saying no. You may love her or whatnot, but you can't stand for this type of disrespect in the interim. You can't. Because this is, this, is, this is really, I mean, this, this, this story became a national story. Now, your face is planted everywhere, and you're the guy who's standing by your wife when she was having sex romps at work with six other people. I don't know how you come back from that, man. The level of simp is unparalleled in this situation. And no guy with dignity, by the way, would tolerate this. I don't care. Okay, I'm going to do, you can leave those in the chat. I'm going to come back to it in a second. I want to do one more before we go back to the chat. I see y'all, y'all getting feisty in there. Or is those old chats? I might be looking at old chats. Deli's like, Jed, you got to press the button. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go to a feminist dating profile. You ever see these dating profiles? How many of you are in the chat? Can you let me know if you're uh, on dating apps and which ones you're on? Rich Cooper put this up too much. And he says, continue writing the profile below. You see it, Deli? There we go. Rachel, I guess, 38. Why do they always have purple hair, the feminists? You ever notice that it's a trend? This is what it says. Let's be honest. I'm probably not your type. That is unless you dig intelligent, feminist, liberal, non-religious, foul-mouthed, sarcastic, well-traveled, opinionated women who could probably, what's missing from there? You know how this one finished. Who could probably kick your ass, right? She's a feminist. She's 38 and not, and single. I can't imagine why. Can you, audience? All right, so let's look at this profile. First off, you see this profile. Here's my advice to you. Number one, we can take it off the, the, because I'm going to reference it. You see a profile of Rachel, 38, feminist, liberal, non-religious, foul-mouthed, sarcastic, well-traveled, opinionated woman who says that she is those things. Here's what one you do. You, You don't swipe. Advice number one, don't swipe, don't get involved, run away, stay away. This is an individual who will literally suck the fun out of every moment that you have, okay? Learn to see the signs. Don't be like, oh, sure, she looks like that, but I know it would be different for me. I'm going to be the masculine man that's going to enter the scene. and mm, You're going to have a battle. Why do you want to, to create stress in your life? by taking on somebody who's already got the, I don't need a man, I'm foul-mouthed and you're going to like it, attitude. Now, what's interesting about the image of Rachel here is that everything that she attests to possess is the opposite of what would attract a man, quite literally. So let's go down the list. First of all, she's 38, so she's already past the prime. Guys are going to start to be thinking, all right, how is her fertility? These are just questions that are going to get asked. You can be offended all you want, but freeze your eggs is not good advice. It's just not as a strategy, you know, a long-term strategy. Then she says, okay, she's intelligent. Okay, I think guys are kind of, oh, whatever. Women's intelligent, great. I think, yeah, they want somebody they can sit and have a conversation with, someone that's going to be, you know, they don't want somebody who's brain dead. They don't want somebody who's like total dits. But do they need you to be a rocket scientist? No, they don't. They'd rather have you uh, like be, be nice and have positive, beautiful, feminine energy than be a rocket scientist. Let's just be, be frank. She's a feminist. Okay, guys will hate that. They want somebody who's not a feminist. Opposite of that would work. She's liberal. Bad. Guys would prefer you to be conservative because they know what's going to come with liberal. That's going to come with feminist. That's going to come. This is like Drew a Fallow in another form. Non-religious, disaster. They'd rather have you be somebody who is religious because that means that your values are grounded in something bigger than yourself. That means that things like purity would matter to you more likely. (sighs) Foul-mouthed. Oh, just what a guy wants. Uh, Just what a guy wants. A foul-mouthed truck driver to date. How appealing. Sarcastic. 
isn't every man looking for a sarcastic woman? They want to come home from a long day of work and have you be foul-mouthed and sarcastic, according to this feminist. Can you imagine? She thinks that this is somehow going to attract men. Well-traveled, mm, guys don't want a well-traveled woman for a couple of reasons. Number one, they like to be able to show you those things. If you did it already, what are they doing? Secondly, the first thing that's going to be on a guy's mind when you say, oh, I'm well-traveled. Who took you there? Who paid for it? Who'd you go with? Who do I have to compete with in my own head? Blah, blah, blah. It's just real. That's just how guys think. An opinionated woman. <laughs> no. You know what that means? That means that every second in the house is going to be this. You know? It's just constantly going to be like, I need to stand my ground. It's going to be like a battle. You're not the man of the house. I'm the woman of the house. Headache. Headache. Like I said, the purple hair is just, and the facial expression is just what it is. So, you, you know, I wonder, do these feminists who put out the dat these dating profiles, do they think this is going to attract men? No. What, they, what they're trying to do is make a point, right? This is like an I don't need a man poster. She's attractive. She puts her face up there. This is a poster to say, I am all of these things. I'm smart and I'm feminist and liberal and non-religious and foul-mouthed and I don't need you. Right. So who, who do you think is going to click on this? Who would click on this? A simpy guy. A simpy guy. Oh, I respect feminist women. I support empowered women. I have a T-shirt that says it. I can wear it on a date. That simp guy is going to click on this. You know what she's going to do? She's going to take that guy and she's going to eat him for lunch, spit him out. And you know who she's going to wind up staring at? Some cowboy at the end of the bar that doesn't give her time. Isn't going to respect all this stuff. Isn't going to want her to be foul-mouthed and sarcastic and all that stuff. She'll change for that guy, though. She will. She'll suddenly be like, hey, for that guy. Not for the simp. The simp, she'll teach a lesson. She'll teach the simple lesson. But the cowboy, she'll change for. So just know that. It's all a test. Can you imagine who's clicking on that? And these women do it with pride. Like, ha I don't need you. Then why do you have a date? If you don't need a man, why do you have a dating profile? Why? What you hungry for, Missy? Just saying. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at this. The Gaming Lunatic. I'm over in the chat. The Gaming Lunatic. I tried to register to Manect, but as I'm not a resident of U.S. or Canada, I couldn't. But I really want to speak to you and discuss. Can you please help me to get in touch in some other way? Is this 200 bucks he sent? Is that what that is? What is that? 200 something? I don't know what you sent. Delhi's like, I don't know. I'm out. I'm not in charge of the chat anymore, Jed. You're on your own. You're alone on an island. Sink or swim. Um, I'll have to think about that because that is the way that I communicate with people um, generally. You can try to find me on IG and stuff like that, but I can't promise I'm always going to see them. But uh, I do appreciate the contribution. Let me think on that. Let me think. I don't know. I didn't realize that. You, I, where are you that you can't get Manect? I thought you could get that anywhere. Hmm. We'll have to see. Jorge Esther Vilad, the manipulated man. I guess that's something I'm supposed to read. Okay, I'm going to read that. I'm going to read that book. I was thinking about doing some stuff where I did some interviews on. I'm not going to share that. I don't want to tease it too much. And then we have Tony Khalil Rogers gave five bucks. Russ gave a dollar ninety nine. Shout out to you guys as well. I don't see a comment. I just see money coming in, which I appreciate. Okay. Look, I'm doing okay. Delhi's like, all right, Jed. It's not the end of the world. I don't do as well as Delhi. It is what it is. All right. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I thought y'all were going to get more feisty in the super chats because I was reading them. It turns out I think you might be a little worried about what I'm going to do when I see him. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a fantastic story. I have to get to now. What time is it? Okay, we have, we have time. This woman, New York Post article I see. By the way, she has 2.3 million followers on TikTok. 2.3 million. I'm not going to play the TikTok because it's got music in it. I don't want us to get hit with some copyright thing. So I'm just going to go through the article. So it says, I went on six dates a week and didn't have to buy groceries for two years. So I'm like, oh, this looks like a story about a woman, a woman who's using men. Isn't that interesting how she's been praised and grown her following since? Vivian Tu, known as Your Rich BFF, first went viral in 2021 with a clip in which she bragged that she went on six dates a week to avoid paying for groceries. Between 2016 and 2018, I didn't buy groceries once. Probably saved about 150 a week. She's captioned. And then she had some song on there. Lana Del Rey's Jealous Girl. Now, in a new interview with Elite Daily, she admitted to her 2.3 million followers that she jokingly made the controversial video and she didn't start going on dates just for food. However, she really did notice an ease with her finances when looking for love. 
She explained to the outlet that she really was on dating apps to find a connection. But she quickly realized, oh, I can go to a fun tapas restaurant for probably free, or I can spend my own money on food at the grocery store that I still need to cook, and it's probably not going to taste as good. Okay. So we're going to get to the bottom of the article. Don't take this one away because I have more. So first and foremost, the reason that she came back and and said, oh, I didn't really mean it is because she got backlash, right? Because it's not a good look for a woman to say, I didn't want to spend money on groceries, so I used a whole bunch of guys to take me out on dates so that I wouldn't have to pay for my own stuff. (laughs) Ha ha. You're basically saying that you used men that you didn't care about. They didn't know that. I'm sure if you went and showed up and say, hey, I'm just going to use you for this dinner so I don't have to buy groceries. Is that cool? The guy would have been like, "Mm, see you later. No, those guys showed up to that date with you and thought it meant something, thought you were into them. And you probably ghosted them after that. You went, you ate, they paid. You had a nice big round, full belly, went home smiling, hee hee hee. And they were out however much, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 100 bucks. I don't know where you went to eat. And that's cute to you. That was so cute, in fact, that you made a video about it. (laughs) Hee hee hee, so funny, nasty, disgusting. That's disgusting. And by the way, that kind of karma, women, when you put that kind of karma out there, it wraps right around and it's going to hit you right in the behind, that kind of stuff. That's bad energy putting out there. You don't use people like that. So that was interesting to me. Now, you ask why I highlight this, because women do it all the time. Women do it. I have encountered many women in my life, many, who have said, I don't really like this guy. And I'll say, why are you going out with him? Well, you know, free meal, <laughs> Or, you know, it's dinner or whatever. I'll just won't talk to him afterward. I'm hungry. <laughs> Happens all the time. Happens all the time, which is why I tell guys, do not spend money on that first date. Don't spend it. Don't spend it. In fact, I would say don't spend it at all. You want to grab an ice cream and take a walk, whatever, fine. I think, you know, $1.99 or whatever it's going to cost that ice cream, you can let go. I would never advise a guy to spend a lot of money on a first date, and here's why. Women like this are prevalent. They're everywhere. And they're out to get you. This woman paid her bills. Paid her bills off of guys that she didn't care about buying her dinner so she didn't have to buy her own groceries. You listening? Okay. Now, this is the best part. Now she complains about the cost of living. She says, well, I didn't have a choice, she says. While she was making $95,000 a year, she says, her living expenses were very high. Living in Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen is an area of New York City, which, by the way, I lived in for years on a teacher's salary before I got into media. She said the market closest to my apartment was incredibly expensive, so I never felt comfortable shopping there. It wasn't easy. I really had to think strategically about what I was buying, turkey corn dogs and supreme frozen pizza. But by going on dates, I was able to save $50 to $100 a week, which amounted to thousands in discretionary income that she could spend on things like a black Prada bag to replace her tattered Longchamp tote. So do you understand what happened here? First of all, this is a woman who doesn't know how to budget money. Stay away from her because you marry a woman like this. Guess what? Suddenly it's like the money's just gone. You're working, you're coming home. Where's the money? Oh, maybe she needed a new tote bag. She doesn't know how to budget her own money. So let me tell you this. And I told this story when I started the show. I lived in Manhattan for years And I paid all of my own bills. I lived alone. And I bought, I went to Whole Foods. I did my grocery shopping. I bought organic foods on a teacher's salary. Okay, you can figure out what that is. A teacher's salary is not big. And I sacrificed everything else to make that happen because I knew that food was important to health and wellness. That's my baby. I always prioritize food and what I eat. And I made sacrifices. So what were you doing, honey? Well, you had to buy a $1,000 bag and walk around with it and hoo hoo and that's what you were doing. <sighs> so, and, and she got comments. Some people were saying this was toxic femininity, all that. She got, and that's why she came back and said, I wasn't serious. Really? You weren't serious? You weren't serious? You just said all the stuff that it saved you, for, you know, financially and what you were able to buy as a result. You were serious. You just got pushed back. So why do I say this to you again? Stop. Stop and don't take seriously these women who are trying to take advantage. I can't believe what she, $95,000 a year. Now, granted, she's in New York City, so we have to, you know, it's relative to where you live and whatnot, but $95,000 a year, you couldn't figure out how to buy some vegetables, some fruits, and make yourself something to do. No, she was lazy, and she was lazy on your dime, guys. Now, she's saying she was going out multiple times a week. I would love, if you're a guy and went on a date with this woman, could you let me know? I'd like to put you on the show and talk about it. 
You know somebody might be listening and say, wait a minute. I went on a date with that girl. I would love to hear that story. I think Deli wants to hear it too. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Six guys a week for two years. 600 guys you went out to eat with? Then she says, by the way, not to, not to belabor a point, but she says, oh, I was, I was looking for a connection too. You were looking for a connection with 600 guys? Liar. You're lying. You took them for their money so that you didn't have to pay for your food. Mm-mm. Okay. I'm going to get to the chat and then I need to get to the matrix because there's stuff going on. Oh, and this Andrew Tate video I'm going to close with is fantastic. So stick around for that. Let's see. What do we have here? Ooh, ooh. Ryan, the eating warrior. I like that. I'd like to know what Ryan eats. Hopefully it's healthy. Coffee dates only on the first date, gents. Yeah, coffee, like something light. I actually really like if you're an inv- I'm not kidding about this. I like like dates that are like, let's go for a walk. Let's like, you know, grab something on the way. You can grab a coffee on the way. You can grab a juice. You can grab an ice cream, something simple. See if she can talk to you. See, see what the agenda is going on there and see if you, you can get a conversation going. That's what my first dates were with my now husband. They were amazing. I was like, I went on the first date. We walked, we talked for a really long time. And I was like, I've never passed so much time with someone and wanted more. That's how I knew. It's a good, it's a good test. Also, if she's like, um, looking for the fancy, bye. Okay. Well, the gaming lunatic is back. Let's see. Minect only lets you register with U.S. or Canadian phone numbers. Oh, I'm from Asia. Maybe I would have fly to meet you in PBD too. Just love that man. Okay, so we'll, we'll t- I'm going to talk to them about Manek today. I don't know the details about that. If not, I can tell you, you can go on my Instagram and send a message. I do see some of them. I can't, sometimes it, it depends when you send it. If you send it when it's light, I see them. If you send it when I get flooded with two or 300, I, I don't know what I'll see, but you can try that. You can also go on Locals and send me a message. Bila.locals.com is another way to contact me. Please, guys, too, I bring you, I promise to bring you censorship-free content. Um, that helps me to be able to do that, to assure that all of my bases are covered, to be able to make that happen. So even small donations, there help. Or if you want to just join for free, I love having you on the page regardless. So you're welcome there, too. Nutrition is life, sent two bucks, yet they skin-peeled the Tinder swindler. There you go, with a laugh. I love that emoji. Tech Sprint, four ninety nine. How are women this strong to go out and spend what I believe is intimate time with someone they're not into, regardless of money spent? Women have been brainwashed, man. They've been brainwashed, and they do it. They do it. They spend this it, intimate intimacy is like dying for these women. It's sad, isn't it, to see a woman that doesn't value intimacy? I mean, you can't you can't have that be the mother of your child. I don't see how you how you reconcile those things oh yeah she doesn't care about intimacy she hopped in and out of bed with everyone and now she's gonna be my baby mama Mm -mm. I wouldn't be down for that Rick Bourne sent 20 bucks if complaining was an Olympic sport the U.S. would take all the gold and silver at least it's true that's a privilege we complain because we're privileged about things you think in other you ever see that um there's that documentary what is a woman Matt Walsh did I liked parts of it some of it seemed a little overdone but whatever but regardless I think the content was largely good and he goes into this like into Africa and he goes to some village and he's like talking about like are you a man or a woman and they're like what are you talking about like I'm trying to figure out what to eat like if we're going to be able to have food for dinner you're talking to me about this nonsense first world problems we are now a country of first world problems okay I need to get to these the Tate video and this other UN regulator so Deli those are good okay cool hit that subscribe button by the way hit that like button we have about 10 minutes to go so Let's go to number five, UN regulator. There's this UN regulator. She does a video, and she talks about how she doesn't like Twitter. Mm, She doesn't like the free speech that's happening on Twitter, and she's going to do something about it. Let's hear what she has to say. uh, Our message was clear. We have the rules which which have to be complied with, and otherwise there will be sanctions. Uh, the confidence has been weakened and I, I had quite high level of confidence when it comes to Twitter. I have to say that we worked with knowledgeable people, with the lawyers, with the sociologists who understood that they have to behave in some decent way, not to cause really big harm to the society. I always felt that this, this notion of responsibility was there. So this is what I don't 
feel from uh, Elon Musk personally. Oh, well, uh, look at that. Isn't that clear. interesting? Have- Isn't that interesting? UN regulator threatening, oh, we'll have to do sanctions. If Elon Musk doesn't crack down on free speech is essentially what she's saying. And she has all the code words in there, right? That she had confidence in Twitter before. Oh, I'm sure you did, doll. I'm sure you had confidence in Twitter before because Twitter was getting directives, as we saw when the Twitter files emerged from the government, getting directives from pharma and following their rules and cracking down on everybody who had a different opinion. So if you were someone out there who believed in medical freedom, crack down, silence, shadow ban, ban, threaten. You liked that, didn't you? You liked that over at the UN. She uses the word behave, by the way, very important. I always talk about when this digital, central bank digital currency is coming in or digital anything, carbon emissions, whatever it is, they want you to behave. Sit in your spot like a good little boy or girl or else we're going to throw sanctions, we're going to censor, we're going to remove you from your platform. Behave. Don't forget that word that's being used. And they say also, oh, we have the sociologists and these people out there who realize that you can't do harm to society. It's interesting because everyone over the last few years that was talking facts about data and were actually talking about science actually had the audacity to challenge the Anthony Fauci's of the world and talk about what science really is and what the stats were actually showing. They were labeled as harmful misinformation. Do you see the game yet? So these people are openly telling you that if you don't squash free speech, if you don't represent the views of the powers that be, they will sanction you. What a noble organization that UN is. Nauseating. So when you, when you try to figure out who you're battling in society for the fight for freedom, it's these people. WEF, UN, all of these organizations, by the way, somebody said on my Twitter the other day, ban all organizations that are two or three words long. FDA, CDC. I mean, it's all a mess. Just know who you're up against. I play this so that you know who you're up against. Okay, this final video was tweeted out by Tate. I thought it was fantastic and interesting and very, very transparent into what the Matrix essentially is. The Matrix resents independent provider men at its core. That is the person who drives them the most crazy. That is why Andrew Tate is under attack. Let's play the video. You have that one on number six, Dolly? Let's play the video. Listen carefully. He helped me. How has he helped you? Tell me. Because I left my job. I was a part of his hospital's university. One part is 12 areas where verified millionaires teach you how to become wealthy. How have you become wealthy? Have you? Yes, because I've managed to leave my job at the age of 23 years old. I'm in the greatest physique in my life. I take utmost self-accountability. And how much have you earned as a result of that, would you say, broadly speaking? Well, put it this way. I was earning about after taxes, probably 9K before. And now I'm well over that and I can provide for my family. And I'm only 23 years old. I have retired my mother and I also have taken care of my... You have retired your mother? Yeah. What does that mean? Is she a racehorse? Have, is, it, is it not good to take care of your family? She no, no, no just the language is interesting. Life. You have retired your mother. I have retired my mother. She doesn't have to work a day in her life again because of her son. And, and she's because happy? She is extremely happy about that. She gets to pursue all her passions. He has personally okay. helped me. How has he helped you? Unbelievable. So this is a guy that calls into this show. I don't know the show. 23-year-old guy who's now financially independent, who listened to Andrew Tate. I don't know if he just went on to Hustlers, if he had an exchange with Tate. I don't know the full context of that. But he listened to Andrew Tate's advice. I guess he was also part of Hustlers in some way. 23 years old. He's making more money than he ever has. He's financially stable. He's independent, meaning he's making his money, but he's not tied to one of these woke organizations that at any point can make rules for you. Hey, get this experimental injection or you're fired. Boom. He's not having to live like that. He's having his own, what we really call financial independence. He's not dependent on the system in any way. Um, And she's bothered by it. Notice the language when he says, I've retired my mother. She immediately goes, she's bothered by that. Bothered by that. Because that is what programmed feminists are taught to do. They're they're taught to say, that's so offensive. Your mother doesn't need you to retire her. When in fact, what a beautiful thing that this young guy was able to make enough money to say to his mom, you know what, mom, you've worked enough your life. You don't need to work anymore. I'm going to take care of you. I've got it all under control. She has the audacity to say, what is she, a racehorse? I mean, do you see how warped it is that people have now gotten offended by the idea of a provider guy, be it your child, be it your husband, 
able to take a load off of you as a woman that you want them to take off of you, by the way, you're all supposed to be offended by that somehow. So this is a multi-tiered message. This is a message about this organization is bothered that Andrew Tate taught that kid who is now an adult, 23 years old, to be financially independent and independent of the system. Of course, that's a problem because how does the matrix grow and prosper if it doesn't have people that are dependent on it? They're also mad that Andrew Tate reminded that guy that it's his responsibility to take care of his family, his wife, and his mom. And he did that, right? That bothers them too because that doesn't fit their I don't need a man strategy at all tiers. Apparently, I don't need a man also goes into when you're the mom. And your son wants to take care of you. So she says, are you a racehorse to be obnoxious? And has the Odessa, is she happy? No, honey. No. The mom wanted to work more. The mom wasn't happy that her grown adult son was able to take a load off her back and say, mom, you don't have to work. What planet does this woman live on? Can you imagine? So it's, it's multi-tiered. And, and the final tier of it is that the Matrix doesn't want you taking care of your family. The matrix doesn't want you independent. The matrix doesn't want you self-sufficient as a man. The matrix doesn't want you taking care of your family. The matrix doesn't want family members able to depend on each other. Remember, if you can depend on each other, you don't need to depend on the state. If you can depend on each other, you don't need to depend on the World Economic Forum. You don't need to depend on these three-letter organizations, CDC, FDA, or whatever nonsense is coming out, coming down the pike. You don't need to depend on any of that because you've got your family, you've got your tribe. They want that tribe broken. And the way they're going to break it is to get those strong, independent men to crack, to somehow get weaker, and to somehow think it's somehow not their job to provide for their families, for their children, for their wife, for their moms, for whoever it may be. They need those men broken in order to wreck society. So that reaction, oh, it's also a bit of jealousy in that woman's voice. You know it, a bit of jealousy. So just know what you're up against. All right. We went over a little bit today. Last chat of the day. Cal L, South Asian guy. We look after our parents in this way. That's right. It's it's like an American problem too, right? You other countries hear this stuff like, what are you so upset about? But in America, there's this, this sense of female empowerment, even if it spites yourself, right? You got to spite yourself. It's unbelievable. All right. Thank you all for being here today. I appreciate it. I will. Uh, I'd love to have you. Remember, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. For those of you who ask, Bila.locals.com is my hub. You can go there. You can support what I do. You can, I'll probably do a, something on the car on the way home talking about some stuff that related to the show, how I feel about this and that. So don't you get my like, you know, my outtakes, so to speak, when I'm like, did I really say that? Hmm. Yeah, I did mean it. Stuff like that. Love you guys. I will see you back in a couple of days. It will be feisty. Is today Wednesday, Deli? Today's Wednesday. All right. So Friday. See you Friday. Pizza Friday. No, just kidding. Okay. See you then.